So we looked recently at the concept of guidance in technology, and in many ways, this topic is deeply related to and It's the concept of technology and feedback or feedback and technology. Somehow technology seems to want to come first in this particular sentence. So the first thing I want to address with you is the importance with regard to feedback of the use of video. So let's make some obvious things. If we record a performer's performance, we can play it back. And we can do that almost immediately, or well, indeed, immediately after the performance has happened. Of course, that is very, very potent. We could almost sort of describe it as like a superpower of coaching and uh, learning a movement skill. The other point is that we can, we can use things such as slow motion or frame by frame analysis. Now we should address that this has some weaknesses in the sense that when we slow down the skill to its you know frame by frame analysis some weaknesses <laughs> did it again there there's the anyway some weaknesses here because that slow motion kind of replay can kind of sometimes lose the essence of what the overall performance is about and we can see in a in a still frame or in a single frame what appears to be an error when it's just part of an overall movement so it's beneficial but we have to be careful to use it correctly However, what is extremely effective is the notion of split screen. You know, let's let's imagine we've got some screen here and we've got a split screen here and this is you performing, this is you over here, I don't know, with you were over here with a tennis racket in your hand and you're hitting a ball and that's being compared to this performer over here who is, I don't know, the world's best tennis ball whacker with a with a tennis racket you know you get the idea and you can compare and contrast between the ideal performance and the performance that maybe you or your athlete has performed that is absolutely superb for what we might refer to as error identification error identification and of course if we're able to identify errors basically we're able to improve rapidly because we're working specifically on the thing that needs to be worked on now then We've also got the notion of the freeze frame. Now, again, I think that's kind of what I talked about over here with the notion of the slow-mo, an individual frame that takes a still, for example, of, of the moment that a rugby player's foot strikes the ball when they're about to kick towards the goal, for example. That freeze frame would allow a very detailed analysis of the performer's action at that particular moment. And that feedback that is going to be extremely rewarding. And we have the notion of overlay as well. An overlay is a sort of a different idea. Imagine you've got a screen here, and what we have this time is we've got you, here's you, here's your legs, here's your arm, here's your tennis racket over here. And effectively what we do is we overlay on top of you the performance of a, an elite performer and to see how similar and how e how closely you are to being positioned to that model performance for example, you know. And if there's a different, you know, if if the performer's leg is here and your leg and your foot position is here, then of course you can identify that difference and start to make some kind of change through comparison. Now, I'm gonna draw out a couple of negatives that I think we should address here. So I think there's some negatives to this. And we always wanna be evaluative in our work. So what might be the negatives here? Well, first of all, we might take, as I said before, we might take imagery out of context. So I think the slow-mo and the freeze frame are the best examples of that. If we see just a freeze frame of a performance, it's not showing that in the context of the overall movement. The other point we make is it's what we'd call time heavy. All right, so to, to build in individual analysis of performance kind of is, is it, it, it drags on that resource of time. And finally, we might wanna say that it's expensive. Now. I'm going to put a question mark about this because I think expensive will get you a mark in your exam. But is it expensive today to use this kind of technology? Is it expensive? Aren't there pretty much everybody with this kind of technology in their pocket already? Now, I'm not saying it's free, but I'm just making the point that maybe that expense issue, it, it, it certainly seems we've got over in a lot of cases. So I, I think we just have to remember that that is relative. I think that's the key thing. Now then, Let's also have a look at the notion of GPS. So let's look, have a look at the notion of GPS. And in case you've forgotten, GPS stands for Global Positioning Positioning System. So this Global Positioning System can know exactly where a performer is on the field, where what you know on the on the on the marathon course, whatever it happens to be. So GPS is really useful 
because we can monitor very closely an individual and team's positioning and movement. So if you think about that in relation to know, a rugby player, say, you can also be able to predict very closely when someone's likely to be reaching fatigue because they've reached their kind of maximum capacity in the work that they've done so far because you've monitored it objectively. We also have to address that it kind of... Um, helps to affect and manage behaviors okay so if we if we um, for example track the positioning of a midfielder in hockey during the course of a hockey match we're going to get a lot of feedback into what the, the the behaviors of that hockey player are in other words what forms of conditioning have they received and whether that kind of stimulus response is the right relationship for the player that's in question so we might be able to work with athletes and challenge them about the way they're actually using their time whether it's it's effective or not on the pitch other things we like about GPS it's accurate and it's objective okay so you can't argue with the GPS if you're told right you covered 10.1 kilometers today when the when the uh, team's average was 12.2 it's objective no one's having a go it's just the fact so it might help us to ad address those points and as I said before I should have written this and actually it can help to predict fatigue I've even heard some coaches saying that it's very good for predicting fatigue because fatigue is when more often injuries happen. So it can also be a really good method of injury prevention. I found that a really fasc fascinating notion. One more feature that I'd like to go over with you within this particular recording, and I think it's the one that will kind of grasp you least when you first see the title of it. It's what we call notational notational analysis. Now, notation notational analysis, I have to say I've been doing it for years, and back in the day, back in the day, I used to do it on like a little clipboard, little clipboard here. And uh, I used to have my pen on the clipboard here. I used to have my pen on the clipboard here ready to do what I needed to do. And I used to, I used to do it a lot with basketball. And for example, I, I, what, the way I would ha have it is I'd have my players' names here. So let's say I had 10 players in my squad for a particular game. And then along the column headings, I would have, for example, uh, pass complete. Pass failed, shot taken, shot scored, um, uh, two point, three point, and basically every time. Let's say this performer here. Well, I can't remember what I said. The first one was. Um, I said it was shot taken. Every time they took a shot, I would tally down how many shots they'd taken. Then I tally down how many shots they'd missed. Then I tally down how many passes they'd completed, and so on. And at the end of it, you kind of get this analysis of how each of your performer has. Now, of course, today, you're not going to tally in this sense. Effectively, what you're going to do is you're going to hit a button, and that button is automatically going to record this for you and pr provide the graphical analysis. So a couple of things about notational analysis. It's a really useful tool. First of all, it's tally-based. Just how often does somebody do something? Now, start to think that on the software side, if you're also tracking GPS, and you're hitting that button at a particular moment, you could not only know what they did in that moment, but where they were in that moment. And so that becomes kind of interesting, right? So the idea about it is you do, you go through a process of what we refer to of, as identifying identifying trends. You know, you can see someone's pass completion ratios. You can see someone's conversion ratios of shot to goals or baskets or whatever it happens to be. And that's a really useful thing. And it allows you as the coach to develop a series of performance performance indicators. You know, so you can be talking to the team and you can be saying, look, we need to, in our basketball match today, we need to be hitting over 55% over, uh, of our shots need to be scored. And what that means is we need to work the ball in close to the basket. We need to be more patient with our plays. We need to draw the big player out from under the key, whatever, whatever. So, you know, you've got all those ideas. And the other point we would talk about is it's really nice. It's a really nice tool for what we'd call error or weakness, error or weakness identification. Now, of course, that could be used in some sort of notion of trying to find out where your faults are so you pick a better team or something. But much more likely it's going to be used because when you find that, I don't know, uh, this player here uh, has um, lost possession through her passes say eight times then of course that's going to allow you to work on passing okay so with that athlete we're going to work on passing 
with that particular athlete in training for the next two weeks or something like that. And the idea, of course, is then to bring these errors down as to as, as few as possible. So I'm a massive fan of notational analysis. It's something I've been doing for years and years and years. I've even had lots of ideas about developing software around the concept of notational analysis. If you've got any ideas, get in touch and we can discuss it. Cheers. <laughs>